attending and sending in your questions. Uh, this is our first town, town hall, and uh, we're doing it with uh, Billy Clark and Michael Cadlib. I'd say they were rock stars in the act world, but then they would get a bit too uh, arrogant on me. So I won't say anything like that, but we're very happy to have them with us. So a couple of things to start with. Um, I just had one question here in terms of a phone number uh, to call. Um, uh, Lubs or Billy, can you um, put it in the chat, the phone number? I, I don't want to turn mine off here in case I lose audio. The phone number to call into or, yeah. or our phone number? No, phone number to call oh. into. Gotcha. Sorry, some you just... Uh, Jill asked the question. I guess, Jill, you weren't, I'm saying this because I know Jill. Jill, you weren't quite prepared, but we'll let it slide this time. So in terms of protocol, um, we're going through a list of questions. We had uh, close to 20 sent in, so thank you very much. If you want, if they're going through a question and you need clarification, uh, please go in and put it into the question area. I will monitor the questions. Um, if you have questions uh, that are new, in front of your questions, just start it off with new colon, and then they'll know that's a new question, so I won't interrupt them halfway through and as they try integrating. So if they're going through a process and you want more for clarification, please put it in there, and then we will try responding in a timely manner. And if it's new questions, we'll handle those towards the end. So with that, uh, I'd like to start with the first question. And the first question is from Katerina. And the question is, uh, what has changed, if anything, in terms of integration of ACT Premium for web with Outlook and email? Co um, parentheses, Office 365. Also, is there any, um, why am I not seeing the rest of that question? Is there any change in terms of working with the templates? Okay, Michael, do you wanna take that one? Sure, yeah. Um... So basically, uh, Katrina, I'm guessing you're on the latest version of, of Act version 22. Um, it just says that you're on premium for web, so I'm not really sure on that. So if you want to put that into the question window, if you know what version you're on, that would help us out a little more. But as far as what, what's changed, um, nothing really. Um, so you still download the integrator from um, the, the knowledge base to, I'm sorry, from the, yeah, from the knowledge base Act to get um, the integration with Act for web and Microsoft. You can also download it right from Act for Web via the tools menu and then preferences. Um, and then that, like I said, that will download that download the integration part that connects Act with Word and Outlook. Um, and then as far as the working with the templates, you can create those on your own as well um, through the right edit template portion of the web. Um, we do offer our services here at Keystroke to create templates for you if, if you do run into any troubles, but you can definitely create those on your own. You can also create them on your own if you use a, um, a remote database. So oftentimes the remote database allows you to use the desktop version of your integration to Word and or Outlook. And that's a little bit more seamless versus the web. And so that allows for better, I shouldn't say better, but more efficient and easier um, integration and template creation. And then you can sync those templates, which will then work on the web version as well. Okay. Uh, but any, during any part of this call, if for some reason you're not on version 22, let us know because the only really complications would be if you're on an older version of ACT and a newer version of Outlook or vice versa, um, they may not be compatible together. So that could be one of the complications you might be running into. All right, thank you, Michael. Now, the next question is, how can I get the 6.0 word processor working under Windows 10? Uh, hi, Harold, uh, that's a, a good question. A um, Couple things with this. So number one, version six, as you may know, is is no longer su officially supported with with Swift Page and, and Act. And what that means basically is they're no longer producing any kind of updates to that version. So if something doesn't work, they're not going to pump any development um, updates into those versions to make it work. Now that being said, at Keystroke we still support older versions, but we can only go so far. So as, as far as it's not working under Windows 10, um, it, it just might never work like that because once again, version six came out about, I think it was 2004, so that's 16 years ago. So it just may never work. Um, we would gladly help you for, you know, if we could take a look at it just to see what's not working. Um, if you wanna give us an email at service at kqc.ca, that's our support email. 
once again, service at kqc.ca with this specific issue. We might be able to fix it with that. If not, your your only bet may be to upgrade to Act Pro 2022, um, which would be in full compliance with Windows 10. But like I said, shoot us an email with either screenshots or the error messages that you're getting, and we may be able to find a workaround for you with your with your version six option um, issue. All right, uh, thank you. And the next question is from Wilbert. Uh, problems with mail merger. How do you allow for the mail merge in Outlook or setup? Who's taking that one? Well, I'll take that because I think Billy's going to take the next three. So uh, I'll finish up with this one here. Uh, Michael again. Uh, Wilbert, um, with this one, if you can, and, and once again, the question window, if you can maybe supply more de details as far as the actual problems you're having. Um, it's sort of vague here with, with the question. So um, I'm not exactly sure what the problems are that you're having. Um, and if for some reason you can't do it there, you need to do screenshots. Once again, same thing, email service at kqc.ca with those screenshots. And um, once we have the specific issues in front of us, we would have a better better answer for you as far as what the actual problems are and then also the resolution for those um, mail merge problems. Excellent, thank you. Um, the next question is uh, Dave Campbell. And it is, uh, when I enter, a new note for a contact, the field is very large and takes up space. Also, I'm not able to go into preferences and change the default font, which remains eight, which is too small for me. I've tried tools, preferences, colors, and fonts, slash notes tabs, and notes details composition, and the changes don't stick. Colleagues who also have this version don't have this issue when entering notes. Can you give me some advice on this? Thank you. Who is taking this one? Uh, I'll go ahead and grab that one. Um, okay. Should I change this that? A, yeah, you can go ahead, because I'm going to take the next couple of questions, and I have some stuff to present on those other questions. Okay, Billy, are you live there? Yep, and you should see my act with my Google integration up for the next question. Um, update 4 is the biggest answer I have for you. Um, so when Act 22 was released, it did have problems with notes and histories, uh, and even in regards to preferences for those um, uh, for those sections were kind of messed up. So they changed uh, that details field to a different control. And in the process, what it does is it didn't understand um, your typical font point size. It did font pixel size. So if you change the font size, say, in the preferences to one number, the actual control set a totally different number, and you had to do special math to figure out where those were at. These should have all been resolved in update four. So that's probably why your colleagues aren't having the, uh, the issue. If you're still seeing that problem in update four, we, we want to kind of log that for, for Swift Pages benefit to try to see if we could get that resolved. Now, uh, there is looming around the corner for Act version 22 update five, though I have not gone through the list to see how effective they are at handling any further issues with notes and histories, though I know that was one of the biggest things they've been dealing with, and the reason why we've had the last four updates was around those detailed views. So double check and make sure you're on update four. All right, um, there was just a-, a quick, Vic, oh. just, a quote on, just a quick reminder, in case you're not aware of how to find that, um, Dave, if you go to help, I'm sorry, not Dave, help, and then about act, and it'll tell you um, the exact update you're on for the uh, for that version, so. Good, thank you, Lubs. Um, I also had a suggestion here that we post the questions. So maybe we'll do that for next time. Uh, we're not set up for the format on this time, but that's a very good idea. So next time we will um, post the questions and that way you guys can see them ahead of time and uh, respond to them or uh, ask additional details on them. So thanks a lot for that suggestion. Okay, the next question is uh, from Michael. Wondering about the status of ACT Google integration is the dependency on Internet Explorer being removed to work better with Google's new authentication process? I still have an ACT database that I can't link to a Google account, and it's very problematic. Uh, I get a lot of these questions all the time. Um, we, um, Before I came to Keystroke, I was working with SwiftPage, and I know that this was something we were working on. Um, for those who aren't in the know, Google changed how authentication works uh, when the Act Google integration was created. It was created with the type of security rules that they had then. But since then, uh, Google has made some of those more broad permissions 
uh, down to more very precise uh, mini permissions. And so the older type permission uh, scheme just doesn't work anymore. So um, they are working on trying to fix this. The version that you have on this question that you put in here is version 21. I do not believe they're going to backport any changes to version 21. Um, even here, though, what you're seeing on the screen, this is version 22. Uh, whenever I try to request a new auth token, uh, it's going to pull up this page, and this is a Internet Explorer window. But if you right-click inside this window, there is a, uh, a part for properties, and inside properties, um, you'll see the address URL they're trying to use. You can actually take this URL and put it into your Internet Explorer browser and authenticate that way. And usually it gets around the version 21 limitation for Google authorization. Um, doesn't always work, but it's a good, a good attempt for you to try. Um, by logging in through Internet Explorer first, uh, you create a cookie in Internet Explorer and that cookie is read by ACT. Once you've gotten to that point, you won't have to touch Internet Explorer anymore. Um, there was uh, the part of this question about the reliance on Internet Explorer. They're very aware that that's a, uh, a hole that they need to fill. So they've been looking into that. Even in fact, uh, most of the screens in ACT now where it's using a browser control like the welcome screen or ACT marketing automation, they're actually using a Chrome-based uh, browser. So I'm hoping that they eventually get to that point, but I have no exact words on it. All right, uh, Michael posted a follow-up question to that. Um, yeah, part of it you've answered. What is SwiftPay's direction on removing all act dependency on Internet Explorer, including help menus, Google integration, uh, O-authorization token authentication, and anything else in act that pulls virtual Internet Explorer windows? They're very desperate to do those things. They've already started the process uh, in version 16 when they started changing how the web info tab works, but they're doing it piece by piece and as it comes up. So. Um, right now, as far as I'm aware, they focus on um, the more major problems first, and they'll come up as these new problems come up. For instance, this Google auth authentication thing came up last year primarily. Um, they'll start to put that into their backlog and focus on it. I can't tell you exactly how prioritized that is, but I can tell you that it's something that they do they do worry about. All right, thank you. Okay, you know, next question is from Misty. The past three versions of ACT have done this, and I've never gotten an answer from the community. When trying to select advanced preferences to sync Google or Outlook, the button will flash when clicked but never open. I've tried things like run as administrator, and obviously updating or new versions don't help. I would love to be able to use this option. I'm at the mercy of defaults. Thank you. Um, I, I have not seen this issue come up myself. Uh, I Earlier today, uh, when I read this question, I went in and I did. I don't have a version of Outlook on my ver on my computer. You're looking at it right now, so I can't show you. But uh, I went out on my main account, and everything was fine. I had full um, full access to those advanced options in both windows. Now, uh, there is a thing that can happen sometimes where a window opens off screen, and since it's not an indexed window within uh, how Windows works. You can't like alt tab to see that window. Um, so that's something that you, you can actually try is you click on the button and as soon as you see that it looks like it's done something, if you hold on your keyboard the Windows key on the bottom left and then hit one of your arrow keys on the right side, usually the right arrow key or the left arrow key a few times, it should pop onto the screen and you should have access to those options. Um, if it's not showing for another reason or by defect, I haven't seen it. All right, thank you. Um, the next question is from Corinne. Uh, if we don't take the $100 per license Orange Care package, can we pay per use for each call? Is there a per incident fee that might be less than the seven times 120 for us, considering only two of us really use Orange Care? Michael, I think that one's for you. Yeah, I actually, uh, I saw this ahead of time, so I, I emailed uh, Corinne. Um, with with our different support options. So um, I think she's good on that one. Okay. Okay, the next question is from Michael. I don't use ACT for emailing or any other fancy stuff. I just like it for contact management and calendaring. Is there a simple version that I can use for this on my desktop at work and also on my Samsung Galaxy S10e? I think, Vic, that'd be a good question for you to answer with handheld contact. Yeah, uh, there is Michael. Uh, we have handle contact, and that syncs uh, directly between your Samsung and your ACT database. 
Uh, if you go to handheldcontact.com, uh, you can see it there. You should be able to see some videos of it as well. And uh, the version of Handle Contact, we've had that running for about 12, 13 years. So it's pretty bulletproof and it works great. So go to handheldcontact.com and take a look at it there. Ken, or, uh, Vicky, if you want to give me screen sharing, I got the website up so if people can just see a quick glimpse right. of what it looks like. Yeah, let me just... You got it? I got it. There we go. Okay, and just, um, we have some other questions uh, about mobile, which we'll get to later. But uh, if you go to handlecontact.com, we have two versions available, the classic, which is the one we've had around um, for the iPhone, uh, iPads, Android phone and tablets. Uh, we just released uh, very recently a version for the API for the web, web version of ACT, and currently we have the iPhone uh, in production for that. Android will be at the end of July uh, with handle contact. So uh, very soon we'll have the Android as well for the API, but um, the classic works with, with uh, um, any of the desktop versions of, of ACT. And just uh, a little note here, we use this internally, and for any of those folks that um, have used handle kind of before and they're using on, on the premium version of act this api version is, is incredible it, it's so fast it's a link right to your database so you don't have to wait for that double sync sort of to happen this goes right to your database has the, the data pretty much instantaneously in there and you have it right at the tips of your fingers you know either your ipad your iphone whatever you have their mobile device um, it's really a great um, great for those people that are um, maybe not at their computer all the time per se excellent Thank you, Michael. Um, next question is from Kelly. This may be too simple a question. However, I'm new to ACT. How can I add a digitized signature on a mail merch template so I don't have to stamp each copy? All right, I'll take this one because I actually have done this before. Um, so, so Kelly, basically the first thing you need to do is to scan your signature. And you can do that you know, any variety of ways. You have a scanner, obviously sign something and then scan it. Or you can do something as simple as um, signing something and then just taking a picture with your phone and then emailing that uh, JPEG to yourself. And then once you have that JPEG on your computer, um, or it doesn't have to be a JPEG, any image file, you can save it as. Um, once you have that on your computer, you can then insert it into your template. So I'll show you real quick here how you can do that. Under the right menu, we're just going to edit um, the, the basic letter template. Okay, and then, so you have your letter here. And then down here, I'm gonna insert my signature. Insert pictures. Go to your directory where you have your picture at. And then there is your signature. And then you save it. And let's just show you that it works. The right letter. And then there's that merge letter with your with your digitalized signature at the bottom there. Okay. All right, thank you, Michael. Mm -hmm. um, this question is from Andrea. Is there a way to get a list of duplicate contacts? Is there a way to run an advanced query checking on fields from both the company record and the contact record? Who wants to take that one? Uh, I'll take these next two just because I already have ACT open here and queued up, and then, Bill, you could take the, the other three there. That's fair. Okay. Sure. Okay, so for the duplicate records, um, the easiest way to do that, Axtra has a built-in duplicate checker within it. Um, under your, You'll go to your Tools menu, and you'll go down to Scan for Duplicates. And you, this is sort of set up in your preferences, these, these three fields that are set as your duplicate checking. So basically, anytime you enter a new contact into ACT, it's checking whatever three fields you have selected, okay? Um, and then when you do the scan, it does the same thing. However, when you're doing the scan, you may want to change it up a little bit. You may just want to say, okay, give me just contact and email. Because, you know, maybe the companies are spelled differently or something. So you just wanted those two fields instead of all three. Then you choose your fields, hit okay. 
returns you a list of anybody who has duplicate information. Okay. And then there's those duplicates, and they may or may not be duplicates if you know, depending on what what criteria you've you've given it. Um, so that that's the way you get your duplicates um, to find them. Now it, it does have to be spelled um, exactly like, and it's got to be character for character. So if it was if there was Johnny Doe in the database, it would not be a duplicate to John Doe. Okay, so it has to be spelled exactly like. Now it doesn't matter case sensitivity or not. It's not case sensitive, but it does have to be spelled um, correctly or the same for it to be recognized as a duplicate, okay? And then the second part of that question was, is there a way to run an advanced query? Okay, so that's under lookup, advanced query, checking on fields from both the company record and the contact record, okay? So unfortunately, um, you can't mix and match there, um, but you can do that with a like a, a report type of thing, just because you're working with two different tables there, um, you wouldn't be able to do that, so. Um, but if you have some reporting tools, um, you may be able to do that. Um, Andrew, I'll reach out to you afterwards just to sort of see what you're trying to get from that. Because I know you have some reporting tools that may be useful. So um, I'll shoot you an email after class today with what, what exactly you're looking for on that to get more specifics. We might be able to help you out with that. Okay. All right, thank you. And the next question is from Benjamin. How do I get contacts info in Outlook? On my phone or iPad to sync with Act without having all my Act contact information sync back to Outlook. Uh, that is one way only. Gotcha. All right, Billy, I'll take this one and then you can add the, the next one. Um, so, Benjamin, when you're doing the setup, you set it up in Act under Tools, Synchronize with Outlook, Outlook Synchronization Preferences. You, you add your database up here. What you're synchronizing with Outlook, and then under Contacts, where it says Synchronize Contacts, there's a list of options here. And the only two that we really recommend would be one-way sync, either Act Outlook or Outlook to Act. Um, there is a two-way sync option, um, but we actually don't support ourselves because there are just too many glitches with it that we found, so we don't recommend it um, because it seems to create a lot of duplicates on either or both sides of the fence. Um, so we try to tell people to stay away from that. Um, but you can do either of the one ways. Those seem to work pretty reliably for the most part with that. With that. So if you wanted to do Outlook to Act, you would select this this option here, Sync Outlook to Act, one way. All right, thank you. Okay, the next question is, I need to set up meetings in specific time zones. That is, I live in the Pacific. I need to set up meetings in Eastern time zone and London, uh, GMT. How do I get to the how do I set those meetings and acts so they show up my calendar at the proper time, particularly if I am on tra if I'm traveling? I usually set my system time to the local time zone that I am in. Who's so, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Who's taking that one? Sorry. That's bad. He's a presenter. So, um, the way Acts stores all dates within the database is through um, a very universal style, and it's all based around GMT. So when I put in a meeting here, like if I put in a meeting for noon, um, it's going to go based off of the time zone that's currently on my system. Whenever I go somewhere else and I change my time zone, this meeting will change in, in time. So basically, you need to just put them in at the time that they're supposed to be based off of GMT or um, uh, in all honesty, don't maybe not change your time zone and just and just do the conversion in your head. It's just a, a limitation in ACT. Now, ACT for web does give you the option of changing the time zone without having to, because it doesn't have a system time to pull from. Um, but yeah, after you do that, you often have to log out and log back in. There's no other real, like really good workaround for that. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, the next question, uh, is there a version of ACT that operates on the Apple iOS? Uh, no, uh, there is not. They don't have anything right now for either Apple iOS or um, Macs uh, in general, but Act for Web is a website, so you can pull that up from anywhere. Um, in the current version of 22, up to 22, uh, Act for Web also has a mobile view. Uh, I don't believe that's going to be in the next, the next full release of Act. Um, but Handheld contact API for the iPhone is uh, blazing fast and gives you the same information that you'd want out of your ACT database usually. Um, I mean, unless there's something specific that we don't, we haven't accounted for, uh, I'd suggest going in that way. I'm waiting for the Android release of that myself so that I can, uh, I can free up one of my laptops. All right, thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, I updated to the latest version of ACT. 
I downloaded my database to a new computer. I make entries into notes and history tabs. When I use the tab key or space key to make gaps in my entry, when I hit enter, it closes all the gaps I had entered. If I reopen that entry, the gaps don't come back. This is from Tom. Hey Tom, yeah, we ran into this originally with Act version 22.0, um, uh, update one, two, and three. As far as I'm aware, this is resolved in update four, but I'd have to check in with, uh, with SwiftPage themselves to see if they've still seen that. I mean, we can, we can try it right now if you want. I'm all game for it. Um, so say whatever you put in spaces, uh, large gaps or tabs, let's just make a new note right now and do it live and see what it does. Uh, test note, let's make a bunch of spaces, more notes here. And then here's a tab. And here's a bunch more. Uh, whenever we save this, let's see what it looks like. So it does, you'll see that there is a large space here. Um, I am on update four. This actually harkens back to another one of the calls. Um, this is actually kind of explainable, but highly technical. It should be going away pretty soon. Um, but you're right, uh, the tabs are definitely gone. Um, so from these now, uh, what I'll do is I'll feed back this back over to SwiftPage. Um, that's the best answer I've got for you, but uh, this is just a limitation in this version. Um, and mainly that goes back to my earlier point about how them they changed this multi-line text box control so that you could have a, a lot more functionality to it. And that's the reason we've had so many updates. So I'm not surprised that it's still showing some issues. All right, great, thank you, Billy. Uh, next question, if we up, this is from Sharon, if we upgrade to the last version of ACK Pro version 22, how long will it be supported? I'll take this one, Billy, because I got the answer um, yep. from Ken. So as far as officially supported from SwiftPage, that would be June 30th of 2021. So basically a year and a month from now. Um, as far as keystroke, you know, we'll support it as, as long as we can. So once again, it goes back to the second question earlier about version six. Um, what I mean by officially supported, meaning that up until June 30th of next year, SwiftPage will come out with updates to the software. So just as Billy was talking about update three, update four, and update five coming out, um, SwiftPage will come out with updates routinely whenever there needs to be a fix. So maybe if Microsoft um, Office needs a fix to work with it or some reason, or, or Windows 10 did something, so now ACT needs to you know act um, accordingly. But after June 30th, no more updates will come out for, for uh, Pro version 22. Um, if you're on the premium subscription version, those are gonna be updated, obviously, as, as needed throughout the subscription life, okay? So that's one of the advantages of the subscription. Um, but as far as keystroke, you know, once again, we'll try to help you as we can. Um, but there may be some things that, you know, just won't be able to be helped. For example, you know, in five years from now, whenever Office, whatever the version is at that time comes out, it may not be compatible with um, Act version 22. And there's nothing we would be able to do about that. So, um, so that's sort of, you know, where that stands. All right. Thank you, Michael. Uh, using, next question, using custom tables, how... How do you delete many records at a time using the global view of a table? Even if we highlight some records, right click doesn't provide choi a choice delete. We have to go record by record. Any chance this could be added, just like in the contact list view? Yeah, um, Billy, can you make me the presenter? Because I have custom tables up here on my side. Oh. Uh, actually, okay. I can, I can I'll show that. One second. Hey, Michael, it's over to you. Thanks. Yeah, we can see your screen now. Okay. So I'm in a, a global view here of, of a custom table. Okay. Um, and the question was, how do I delete, you know, maybe you imported them wrongly or you created a bunch of test ones and you want to get rid of them. How do I delete them all instead of just doing it one at a time? So what you can do is highlight a bunch and you can either do it via control. So I'm just clicking on control here as I highlight them. Or if you knew they were in a list here, everybody, at, you know, maybe the top 20, I can highlight the first one, hold down shift as I highlight the last one I want to delete. And while they're all highlighted, there's a delete button on the toolbar here. Okay, so if you notice there's no right click delete here, like there is an act, like if you're on a contact or whatever like that. Um, but there is a delete button on the toolbar. You'll click that. It'll say, do you really want to delete whatever that number is, in this case 15? Yes. And then it deletes it. 
So once again, a little bit dangerous too, to be careful you're not highlighting the whole list or you'll delete everything. So just make sure you're only highlighting the ones that, that you want to get rid of. All right, I have uh, quite a few questions here, so I will read them and then uh, Billy and Michael, you decide uh, who wants them. Okay. So here's a question from John. Is there any way to freeze column and widths? I set the column names and have, con have to continuously reset the width of the columns. What what uh, what version, John, are you on? Because I, I think that's been resolved in, in the latest versions, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and also, version in version 22, you do have the ability to freeze your columns as well. So you want if you want to freeze the first three columns, for example, here. Company contact and phone. As you scroll, let me add more columns so we can actually scroll. So now as we scroll to the right here, those first three columns will stay in place. I'm not sure if that was the question he was answering or not. All right. Thank you, Michael. Uh, the next one I'll, I'll take. I'm running the latest version of Handle Contact Classic on my Android phone. I would like to be able to view mobile numbers in addition to business numbers. How can I get the extra field? It would be very handy. Uh, Peter, uh, you can email um, service at handheldcontact.com and ask that question. The You can do that by going, I'll, I'll give you the verbal answer, and then you can uh, also email, and then Craig can send you detailed instructions. If you open up your console on your computer and go to field mapping, uh, once you're there, you can go through and you can choose any of the standard fields in ACT and up to 50 custom fields. And with that, you should be able to view the mobile numbers as well. So if you go to your um, handle contact console on your computer, go to uh, change the field mapping. And from there, you can choose the fields and that will sync over the, the uh, mobile number and business numbers as well. Okay, uh, next question. I'm a manufacturer's rep. In years past, I was able to use ACT with constant contact. I found this easy and intuitive to use. Working through ACT e-marketing is much more difficult. Also working with email templates is not easy to use. Any suggestions on that, Michael or Billy? I'll let uh, Billy, Billy a, the AMA man, take that. So if you're working with Acti Marketing, I can understand that the templates are very difficult to work on. Um, the Acti Marketing editor hasn't been updated in several years, so that the templates can be very difficult. Um, that's the second generation of email marketing that came out through um, through SwiftPage. There's a newer generation called Act Marketing Automation. We've done some webinars on them all through April. Um, it has a much, much easier uh, template designer that makes things a lot easier. And you can also uh, import your own HTML depending on which version of AMA you're in. Um, so secondarily, Acti Marketing is going to be going away, I believe at the end of this year. So uh, you, you probably don't wanna necessarily put you know all your eggs in that basket. Um, Act Marketing Automation is a lot more powerful. It's designed not only to just send out like drip marketing campaigns, but the new functionality that's coming out is going to be geared towards single email blast style, style sends straight from the contact record. So they're really working on integrating that more with the Act product in whole. Um, I don't believe that you can work with constant contact with Act at all anymore unless there's an add-on that I'm not aware of. All right, um, Billy, do you have a suggestion of where they'll go to watch a quick video or get some more information on this? On the Most definitely. Billy, Billy, if I can just quick follow up, uh, there is an add-on uh, by uh, Egan Consulting. Oh, excellent. That integrates them. Um, to answer your question, Vic, yes, uh, there's actually two different places. Uh, if you go over to keystroke.ca, Michael, if you want to toss up the website, um, uh, if you scroll all the way down to the right-hand side, you're going to find two sections. One's going to be training videos um, that are from SwiftPage, and the other are going to be our webinars. Um, right there's the keystroke training videos or the webinars that we've run, and the free training videos are straight off the SwiftPage website. Um, uh, in both cases, uh, for the at least I know for our uh, training videos, our webinars were designed to be about an hour in length and cover um, entire sections of AMA, whereas the free training videos are short, um, three to eight minute or so videos from SwiftPage on feature specifics without going necessarily into the, the nitty gritty of those. 
Okay, so that's an option. And like Ken mentioned, if you go to e search Egan Consulting, uh, Pat Egan, uh, they do have a product that syncs with Constant Contact. So that's worth checking out as well. Yeah, I replied in writing too. Oh, thank you. Okay, the next question. Uh, for customers who have Act for Web and AMA self-hosted, what is the best practice in regard to security? Do you, have, do you put it in behind DMZ? Uh, use a separate server and install Act for Web? Also, some IT companies that we work with don't like opening ports 80 and 443, which AMA and Insights relies on. What ports can we use as alternatives? Well, um, in some cases, you can use Connect Link, which opens up port 22, which is a very common um, port for SSH, which is a type of uh, type of encrypted uh, communication, primarily around uh, FTP or secure communications. Uh, Connect Link is a companion application that um, the Swift page put out specifically designed around creating an endpoint that follows uh, the security practices uh, that are required for AMA and is hosted through a company called Cloud Elements. Um, that's uh, one of the other options. The, when it comes to securing a website though, uh, I mean, you can do whatever you'd like on that for the most part. I try not to be the person to give you exact advice on how to secure everything because your IT guys know best. Um, so I would follow whatever guides they have. What I've done in the past is I have a web server outside uh, or in a DMZ. Uh, I have my um, my SQL server secured uh, uh, in other ways, for pretty much where uh, it's not accessible externally except by from this internal process for the website. Uh, and I put that under a SSL certificate, not open SSL, but an actual SSL certificate preferably. All right, thank you. Um, next question is, when will the new handle content for Android be available? I think we answered that one. It'll be uh, by the end of July. Um, Dennis, if you have a question about the current uh, handle content, you said you're having uh, issues with your tablet, email me, uh, vic, V-I-C, at kqc.ca. So vic at kqc.ca. Thanks, Dennis. Okay, next question. I'm working from home and remoting to my desk, running ACT locally. I noticed that ACT hangs up hangs hard every time I change group memberships. It works fine when I'm at the local desktop. It's only an issue when remote, all other functions that works fine as a remote session. I'll Anyone? Take that. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. Uh, I need a little bit more information um, as far as like, is it when you're adding a contact to that group? Um, if that's the case, say if I'm here and I wanna add a contact to a group, What sometimes happens, especially if you're remoted in, it's what it sounds like you're remoted in, like via a remote desktop. This box here, what I've seen has happened is it, it's like off the screen. You, you don't even see it. Um, and so that could be why it's freezing up. So it looks like it's frozen because you can't do anything in ACT, but this window here is actually hidden off the screen. Um, and so what you have to actually do is it's a, it's a um, there's a couple keyboard shortcuts you have to do to, to fix that. So um, Vic, if you could get the name and email of that person, and I'll shoot them a, a knowledge base article afterwards to, to fix that. All right. Uh, remind me, Michael, the name. It's Peter. Okay. Um, next question. Can I create an HTML email and templates? It uses Act 22 Update 4. Can you repeat that one? Uh, can I create an HTML email in templates? Uh, so could, this yeah, which ahead, section though. of ACT? There's lots of different templates. Yeah. So there's templates that come in with ACT that use the ACT word processor, templates that you go through Outlook, which are email templates that go there. Uh, AMA uses templates. AEM uses templates. So a little bit more information would be fantastic about which section of the product you're talking about. All right. Um, maybe Kelly, if you want to email, um, Michael, where should they email if for more details on that? To yourself? Uh, service, service at KQC. Service at kqc.ca. Yeah. The next question was about con constant contact, but I think we answered that one already. Uh, what are the outstanding bugs with ACT v22? I reverted to v21 due to huge problems when v22 first came out. Actually, let's, let's can we go back a second, well, Vic, if we could? Um, I just want to cover that one question that was up um, about the hidden window. So here's the knowledge base article for, I'm not sure who, uh, I think Peter asked that. Um, 
So here I'm highlighting the area that that's um, required here. So the act window is basically outside the monitor viewing area. Um, so what you have to do is click on the act icon that's on your taskbar, and then hold down the Alt key and your space bar, and then release. Hit the M key, which is short for move, and then you'll be able to hit the um, like the arrow keys on your keyboard. Uh, your left or right to move the the window, and then you'll see the that group window sort of pop into your view then, and then you'll be able to um, um, you know add a group or move a group membership there for that. So I'll just leave this up here uh, for a little bit so Peter can see that. Also, as a note, and I, I'd actually we'd actually request to have this KV updated too. In later versions of Windows, you can hold the Windows key and hit the arrow keys uh, left and right to move them from oh, nice. window to screen to screen. Um, especially if you were on like multiple screens on your laptop, like in the office and you undock and you're back on a single screen, it's an easy way to get it back on the screen. Thanks, Billy. Yep. All right, uh, the next question was bugs with B22. Uh, they had huge problems. Well, I think update four is out now and that has solved a lot of the problems. I don't know what some of the outstanding ones are now. If one of you want to take it. Yes, I'll take that. Um, yes, so as Vic said, update four has fixed a lot of bugs. Um, if you if you still have some bug issues and you're on update four, um, let us know what they may be. Um, but once again, check your inact. You go to help, about act, right here in the top. That's going to tell you the update you're on. So if it's not update four, um, make sure make sure you get that. Um, easiest way to get that on your system under help. Act notifications, and you'll get a little window in the lower right-hand corner that lets you know if you need to download it or not. As, as mine says, it's, I already have the latest version. But it'll say something like, um, you, there's an update out there, please click here to download. Now, if you're in a network environment, you, you want to you, um, you talk to your you know, IT folks first, first before you do that, because you may need to be an admin to do any kind of installs. Um, so make sure if you're using, if you're more than one user, check with whoever the powers that may be at your place to, um, you know, make sure that you guys sort of schedule that or, or uh, have them do that for you if, if need be. Um, otherwise you may run into some issues trying to install it if you don't have the proper rights for that. Okay. Um, but if you do still have issues and you're on update four, um, please let us know because there are a few out there um, and update five is coming out relatively soon within a month or so that will fix a lot more issues as well. So, but I think update four has really got it to a place where it's it's very workable now. Where um, update two, update or I'm sorry, one, two, and three, there was a lot of a lot of issues that almost made it sort of unworkable in certain areas. So, but it, it's at a good place right now, and will continue to get better. All right. Thank you. Um, this question is from Randy. I use a family contact, e.g., Rick and Christine Ansel. Any way to get both of our mobile numbers to sync to my native contact app on my iPhone? Um, I don't think there's a way to do it uh, just with ACT, but with Handle Contact, uh, you can do that. You can uh, go to, um, on the Classic, you can go to the uh, settings in your on your console to the field mapping, and you can choose which fields you want to synchronize. And if you have two different fields, you can synchronize those through. And on the new uh, Handle Contact API, if you're running uh, API version, uh, then you will be able to do that with the new API on Handheld Contact. And the next question is, I utilize Handheld Contact for syncing Act 20 with my Android. Is there a way to access my secondary contacts? Yes, there is. If you go to the console of Handheld Contact, if you again go to the field mapping, you should be able to choose the secondary contacts there on the list, and then they will come across for you. And next question, is there any plan to be able to access group function in handle contact. Um, at this point, no, we are always looking at improvements and adding um, different functions. Right now in uh, handle contact, you choose which groups you still want to synchronize, but at this point with API, you can only sync one group so that you can um, choose which people you put in that group and then you synchronize that through. But ability to, to work within groups, that, that isn't in the uh, roadmap right now. Um, I have Honda Contact as our newer version. Uh, we have the classic version, and we also have the Handle Contact API if you're on the, the ACT version with the API. And they're two separate programs. And so what we suggest if you're running uh, classic, 
uh, if you do have um, a web version of or the API version of ACT, you can sign up for a trial and try it, see how you like it. They are two totally separate programs, so it's not an upgrade path. They are two separate products. So um, personally, I actually run both of them on my phone, and I love it because uh, there's some things I like about the Classic and other things about the API. So um, the API version is the same price, uh, $79.95 as a Classic, but they are two separate programs. Okay, how do I print out all the contact information from the contact menu? There used to be a direct report um, that used to do this. So how do I print out contact information from the contact menu? Who wants that? Go ahead, Billy. Uh, I mean, I can, I can take it, yeah. Should we really switch? Depends. Yeah, go ahead. Really depends on which um, information that you want to print out. Um, so there's more than one, if you're just trying to get a simple list of certain data, the, I want to see the best way to do it is the list view, because then you can add in your own columns, you should customize columns, select only the items that you want to make sure get printed out. And then you can just print this button, um, this entire screen straight, straight from this window. If you're looking for something more like the contact directory, um, or even some of the like address labels and so forth. So the contact directory is right under the report section. There's the contact report and contact directory, which give you basically the same information that's here on my list view, but um, you can do it for um, specific contacts or lookups. Um, the, uh, in the desktop edition, um, they, they kind of have this, in a different place in the web edition, but on the desktop edition, if you go file print though, you also have additional address books that you can print out specifically. Um, so it really depends on what information you're looking for uh, as to what you wanna print or what format you're looking for it in. But this, if you're just looking for just hard information, I strongly suggest the contact list. I said on the web, they changed it. Uh, the, there's a print option on web. It's not, there's no file menu for the web. So it's actually a print option that should be on the contact list. Excellent, thank you. Uh, next question, is there a way to sync Apple iPhone contacts with ACT? Uh, Mike, uh, sounds like you have handle contact. If you want to email service at handlecontact.com, uh, you do have an import option uh, to synchronize your iPhone contacts into your handle contact and then sync them back to ACT. So please email service at handlecontact.com and Craig will respond to you on that one. Next question, uh, why is the act for web browser view being removed? Why is the yeah, web for, act for web browser being removed? When, what version expected to be, be the last with it? I believe that they were commenting on something I stated earlier about the mobile view going away, and I believe that it's going away in 23, and that was the last I heard. Um, I wouldn't take that as fact until it's actually announced by SwiftPage, though. All right, thank you. Um, Act, this person uses ACT version 22 growth suite. How do I get the ACT add-ins for Outlook to manually attach an email to the contact? It was there in the past, but I don't see it any longer. I use this to prevent all emails from being added into ACT. Who wants that one? That's from John. Um, that's probably gonna need to be you, Michael. I don't have Outlook on this yeah. VM. Michael, yeah. I'm changing the presenter to you. Okay, so the um, <clears throat> a couple years ago, we ran into the same issue with, with ACT and Outlook. The integration between the two just constantly broke, not only for our clients, but also internally. And it was sort of driving us nuts. Um, and so what happened was we developed our own program called Dash for Outlook. Um, and this is it on our website here. Um, so, I mean, we could walk you through getting it fixed on your own in one step, um, but you may run into the same issue tomorrow. It may disconnect it for no rhyme or reason or a Windows update might disconnect or something like that. Um, so you know, we typically, if, if people do have issues with their built-in Act and Outlook integration, um, we typically let them know about this product. Um, it's a one-time perpetual license that they can purchase, Act for Outlook, um, for less than $40. Um, it, you know, it's less than what our support would cost to fix the, the built-in one, and you have less headaches because it works. Um, so you know, if you want more information on that or you want a trial on that, I'm not sure who the person was that, that asked about this, but uh, just email us at service at kqc.ca, and we can get you set up with a trial to, to test it. 
um, but it comes with all the bells and whistles that the built-in one does, plus a few more. And like I said, it, it doesn't, um, it has a much more, um, much higher reliability percentage than the, the built-in one. Yeah, one of the, the features, Michael, that people really like is the ability to create lookups from your inbox. So you can select one or more inbox items and then right click and say, create lookup, and then it immediately opens up those contacts in Act. It's a very popular feature. All right, thank you. Um, new question, is there a way to track who opens the emails? If you're talking about Act for Outlook, um, no. Um, the AMA um, marketing, yes, you'll, have, you'll get reports that you know, track when they opened them and things like that, and if they clicked on any links. I'm not sure if the question was pertaining to Afrolic or just in general. I'm not sure. That was from Kelly. So if you have uh, further questions on it, Kelly, email service at kqc.ca. Okay, question from Mike. Do I have the ability to have tickets, and is that in tables? Repeat that last part. Uh, about the uh, tables. Do I have the ability to have tickets and is that in tables? Okay. Um, so I guess it would just depend on what, what um, add-on pieces you have and if you have tables enabled with your with your serial number. If you do, then yes, um, service tickets are, are a huge part of custom tables. Um, and it, it's a great way to track any kind of service, whether it be the type of service we do where it's with act support or if you if you're a uh you know an hvac or air conditioning or a lawn service any type of service where you're going out to people multiple times and you want to track that so you want to track the date you were there maybe the cost of the service for that date what you did at, at that particular time maybe what, what products you had to purchase for your client um and then any special notes that you had for that particular service this way you have a sort of a running list of the things you've done for them um over the years um, and then you, you just track that in, in the custom table section of Act. And, and Mike, we use that internally ourselves as well. So we all of our tickets are tracked in Act uh, as well. And Mike, um, if you want to uh, email me, uh, you had questions in terms of what other products might be useful for you, uh, please email me, Vic, V-I-C, at kqc.ca, and I can put you in touch. I can chat with you for a couple minutes. I'll give you a call, and then I'll get... Uh, the right salesperson to call you in terms of doing a demo and finding out what what uh, you would like it to do and what we might have for that. Yeah, and just a, a quick addition to that is that we do have free templates for uh, ticket supports as well. So if you purchased either Act Premium Plus or um, or Tables for Act, you can get a free template to set up a uh, support desk. Excellent, thank you, Ken. Um, wh what is the difference between version 20 and 22? Who wants that one? That's um, it's kind of a tall order between the two. Um, there is uh, over on the SwiftPage um, KB a bit of uh, a couple of articles that are important. Um, there are some articles in regards to what was fixed, and there are version based like features um like features but right here you'll see uh kind of a, a guide thank you michael for pulling this up of things that they've added year by year uh so it's a kind of a good way to kind of see the major features on the box pretty much that they've changed from year to year michael can you pull up our website certainly if i can spell it right sure yeah Okay, and click on Act, then Act Products, Act Products right at the top, and then scroll over, and you'll see Act Version Comparison. There we go. So what Billy showed you is what Act.com has, but here is uh, an, like an accordion view, and you can click on each and every one of them, a much, much more detailed breakdown of all the different uh, features that were introduced specifically with that version. So what you can do is you can see your version 20 there. You can expand version 21 and 22 and see what was at with that release. All right, thank you very much. Uh, last question. Um, it says, thanks for the Act for Outlook suggestion. This is Peter. 
I find the current process problematic. Do I have to disable the embedded routine before I switch to app for Outlook? I mean, I do. Yeah, uh, you, you don't want both running. You'll get double histories. Yeah, you'll you'll yeah. definitely mess up your data. If you want to have dirty data, then you do that, but please don't. Um, and when it comes to disabling it, there's, there's actually multiple ways. You can actually completely disable that out of Outlook, or you can just uh, turn off the settings in the Act Preferences menu. It's the easiest way to do it. Um, that way, you don't have two programs doing double duty. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, Billy and Michael and Ken you as well and thanks everyone for all the questions uh, this has been uh, great we've had some good suggestions in terms of format for next time as well uh, the session was recorded um, if you do want a copy of it email myself vic at kqc.ca and I can send you out a copy of it um, Ken I'm not sure are we is this going up on the website as well or I haven't decided yet but good question well um, this is far more interactive so I just want to make sure that we're not uh, exposing names that we shouldn't. Yeah, so. and the names are here. So I, I think what we'll probably do is if you do want a copy of it, please email myself and I can send you a link for it. So vic at kqc.ca. So thank you very much, everyone. Uh, we finished on time and uh, look forward to the next one. So make sure if uh, you want to show our where to sign up for the next one, uh, Michael, that would be great if you go to um, hand, uh, keystroke.ca, scroll down. And remember, uh, send the questions in ahead of time if possible, that way we got a chance to review them and can give you the best possible answers. So Michael is just showing us the um, where to sign up. So the next one is there, so please sign up and we look forward to talking to you again. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day.